What happened this morning was as the power levels uh, got below a certain limit, the computer kicked offline, the station went into free drift. Uh, once they discovered what had happened, they used the Soyuz control to bring it back into a favorable sun attitude and began recharging the batteries. In the same time they were assessing the power levels, they discovered that the Kavant 2 batteries had dropped too low. And, uh, and so they, uh, once we're back in attitude and had good solar power, they reactivated the Mears jets and are now holding attitude with the, with the Mears jets. And the computer's been reinitialized, and they're back to basically to where they were yesterday about this time. And you can see that, that uh, where they all come together is a small node, and there's room for two cosmonauts to work in there. I was wondering if Pilot Air was one of them. Well, they haven't, uh, we don't know what the cause might be at this point. They're still doing some tests on orbit with the progress. Access to the power coming, that could come from the undamaged solar arrays. Well, uh, it's not likely we'll be able to gain, regain access to the uh, module itself or repressurize it in the near future, though I'm sure they'll look at that at some time uh, when it's appropriate. Their initial priority is to regain the power from the three undamaged arrays. They looked at a couple of different options, uh, both in it. Um, it's like any uh, system, technological system, and any system of hardware like your car or, or an airplane. Um, you know, if the, if the dashboard lights in your car go out, you don't uh, necessarily stop driving it in the daylight. And uh, so, uh, you know, if you lose a hubcap, you don't, don't stop driving the car. You just keep going until you find a replacement. But, uh, uh, obviously, these problems are more serious than losing a hubcap, but they are things that, that are solvable, and all of spaceflight has been like that. All of aviation has been like that. Uh, shipboard travel is like that. You anticipate the problems as best you can. You repair them when they arise, and uh, if you can't, you go to port and, and fix it there. With a spacecraft like the Mir, of course, you cannot go to port, so you bring the repair facilities to it, similar to what the Navy does when they're deployed on the front lines. And uh, so that's what's happening here. And as long as it can be repaired and the crew can be maintained in a, in a safe environment, uh, there's no reason to, to take another course. But that other course is always available to us. Outside to string cables to another module and also doing the... It would be silly to, to back off on anything we're doing at this time until we know for sure what direction we're going to go. So uh, I am, have instructed the program on our side, and I know Mr. Ruman is doing the same thing on his side, to continue uh, full speed uh, preparing for the next mission with the understanding that there probably will be modifications as we approach it.